place a steel fence post or plastic or fiberglass pole as a marker at the release point to make the point easier to find in future visits. Avoid wooden posts. They're vulnerable to weather and decay. Markers should be colorful and conspicuous. White, bright orange, pink, and red are often preferred over yellow and green, which may blend into surrounding vegetation. If you're in a place where conspicuous posts might encourage vandalism, mark your release sites with short, colorful plastic surveyor stakes or steel plates that can be tagged with release information and located later with a metal detector and GPS. Depending on the land ownership or management status at the release site, it may be necessary to attach a sign to the post or pole indicating a biological control release has occurred and that the site should not be sprayed with chemicals or be mechanically disturbed. Map coordinates of the site marker should be determined using a GPS unit or a GPS-capable tablet or smartphone. There are numerous free apps available for recording GPS coordinates on a tablet or smartphone. Coordinates should complement but not replace a physical marker. Accurate coordinates will help relocate release points if markers are damaged or removed. In addition to coordinates, creating a physical map of the release site may help yourself and others find the site more easily during revisits. They are especially useful for long-term biocontrol programs where participants are likely to change, and also for release sites in remote locations or places physically difficult or confusing to access. A map should be detailed and describe access to the site, including roads, trails, and unique landmarks that are not likely to change through time. There are several free apps available that can track and record your route to a release site, which you can later use to return to the release site or share with a cooperator. If your release site is in a remote area with no cell coverage, you can use your vehicle's trip odometer to measure and record mileage between specified locations on your map. For example, when you turn onto a new road, at cattle guards along the route, and where you park. The map should complement but not replace a physical marker and GPS coordinates. Your local land management agency or authority may have standard biocontrol agent release forms for you to complete and submit after your release. Typically, the information you provide includes a description of the site's physical location, including GPS-derived coordinates and elevation, a summary of the biological and physical characteristics and land use, the name of the target weed and biocontrol agent released, the number and life cycle stage of the agent released, date and time of the release, weather conditions during the release, and the name of the person who released the biocontrol agents. The best time to record this information is while you're at the field site. Consider using a smartphone and reporting app such as iBioControl. This free application uses EdMaps, a web-based mapping system increasingly being used to help county, state, and federal agencies track releases and occurrences of biocontrol agents, as well as invasive species in North America. Using this app, you can submit your information immediately while in the field. If you don't use this app, then once back in the office, submit the release forms to your local weed control office, land management agency, or other relevant authority or database. Always keep a copy for your own records. A photo point is used to visually document changes in target weed infestations and other components of the plant community over time following the release of biocontrol agents. Use permanent features in the background as reference points, such as mountains, large rocks, trees, or permanent structures, and make sure each photo includes your release point marker. Pre- and post-release photographs should be taken from roughly the same place and at the same time of year. Label all photos with a year and location. Many smartphone and tablet apps do this automatically or with minimal input. Keep in mind that it can take a long time, for example up to 30 years, to see changes in some target weed populations. 